Many losing a pet is like losing a child or a sibling, a family member, and more families are turning to pet crematories to help keep the pet's memory alive. But News 2 consumer investigator Libba Holland wants to make sure you understand your options in a business with no regulation. When your pet is young and playful, a scenario like Debbie Eastman's is hard to imagine. My first two dogs died of cancer, so you know we knew, and it was it was time. So when that time came and her pets passed, she heard her options. And I remember the vet asking, you know, what do you want us to do? We can have him taken at a group cremation. You can do a private cremation and have their ashes. And at a time like that, you really don't stop and think. Much. I want to make sure that they get taken care of the right way. That's why funeral director Marcus Yoakum is so passionate about educating his pet cremation clients. Where I'm from, being a funeral director, we have to be very careful on how we say things to our families. In the pet industry, there's no regulations. Nobody's watching. He fears families may not know exactly what they're choosing when they decide on a pet cremation service. A number of funeral homes offer three forms of pet cremation. Private cremation, when the animal is alone in the cremation chamber and the owner receives all the remains. Communal, when multiple pets are placed in a cremation chamber and the remains are not usually released to the owner. Or individual cremation, which is when Yoakum says it gets confusing. To use the terminology of individual, that's very misleading. You may also see similar terms partitioned or separate cremation. This practice generally means multiple pets are placed into a cremation chamber but are separated by brick or airspace. Everybody knows that there's flames that are in, in regards to cremation. Well, fire needs air, a lot of air. It's very powerful on the inside of that unit. There's a lot of commingling going on when that type of cremation is taking place. I don't see how it's justifiable. If someone wants, you know, they they can they can place the pet into the crematorium themselves. They'll watch I also spoke with funeral it. director Elaine Smith. Some organizations have a problem with the term separate because they're not they're not t separate kind of indicates that there's maybe a wall between them and they're not because of airflow it has to be open. She says partitioned cremation requires the most skill, care and ethics and that's why you need to research who's doing it. There are companies that will take shortcuts to reduce expenses. Smith admits there may be a mixture of particles in the remains, but she says no form of cremation, not even with humans, can prevent some kind of commingling. Because it's it's a chamber that's repeatedly used. I mean, you think about dust um, mm -hmm. that, that's in the air, and when that settles, those, those are particles of cremated remains. So certainly anyone who is very concerned, they should go with the private. That's what Eastman did. I, I mean, it really wasn't even a thought. I didn't ask how much. I didn't ask anything else. Now she has her lab, Marley. Marley. But she'll never forget the roles her first pups played in her life. They can never live long enough. So you have to really enjoy every day that you have with them. Although In order to operate a crematory in South Carolina, one must apply for a permit through DHEC. There are 13 permitted crematories in the Tri-County area. And remember, if you have something you want the I-Team to investigate, email us at iteam at wcbd.com. You can also call the I-Team hotline at 843-216-4949.